So I did my Indie Lab on brakes on bicycles and just other stuff in general. So the purpose of this lab is to find the coefficient of pressure between the bike and the brake wheel. Um, if we determine the kinetic energy, well, my hypothesis was if we determine the kinetic energy of the bike, then we can compare it to the work done by the brakes because they should be equal for the bike to stop. We can also use the linear acceleration of the bike's wheel to determine the moment of inertia. Yeah. Yeah. This is all the equipment I use. I used a bicycle, two six-pound weights, photo gate, aluminum rod, lab stand, dual range, force sensor, interface computer, post-it notes, and athletic tape. Diagram. Basically, all I did was because the wheel originally was too light, so as soon as I even like, barely touched the brake, it would stop. So I had to add weight to the wheel, so it had a higher mo or more momentum. And then I just put post-it notes kind of on the outside, so it would go through the photo gate. Background, everything I used. So added some weights, obviously. I just went through all this stuff. So. And, but then I had a force sensor on the brake tied to it, and then I just pulled the force sensor to determine the force used. So this was my data. I had all this. And here ended up being the coefficient of friction. It was like 0.27 was the average, which isn't that far off, which was kind of like, I, I expected it to be higher personally than it was. I guess I mean, it's a break. And here's just like a graph of everything. This is velocity, obviously, and then you have acceleration, and then this just looks really weird. And then that's the force and that you thought the peak. Can you click on the left side of it? I think it'll take you back one slide. Um, you were describing those two. Um, sorry. There you go. Uh, you just said that the first graph was velocity. It's labeled as distance. Can you walk us through those again? Well, isn't it, or it's because it's distance over time, the slope would be velocity. I wouldn't want you to gloss over that subtlety for these people. Okay. Okay, good. Take us through it one more time. Okay, so, because it's distance over time, the slope would be velocity. And then here you have velocity over time. And here's the initial acceleration. And then here's the deceleration. Is that good? So sources of air, there's you know, a lot of things that can be wrong. Because the value I found that would be the accepted value was a study they did at MIT, which was they just basically did the same study almost, except they also looked at different surfaces and weather conditions, because that's what they were studying. And they used possibly different brakes, different um, rims, because most rims are made out of aluminum because the brake rests on the rim instead of like the actual tire. So, but they can also be made out of both materials, which could affect it. And my air ended up being about 17.5%, or 17.57%, which isn't that far off, be considering theirs was 0.33, and the closest one I had was about 0.327, so. Conclusion, it sucked trying to calculate the coefficient of friction. I spent most of my time trying to figure that out, but then it kind of came to me. Um, kinetic energy was obviously the easiest way to find it, and you need the distance after the break is applied, so the distance it takes forward to break. And then all this is just put together. But this is also pretty useful because you can use it for other things, like if you want to find the coefficient of friction for like a train's break or a car break. Um, it'd be interesting to compare like different tire brands and, well, because tires do affect it, but like different brakes and different rims to see what the different coefficients of friction would be. And I don't know, it would have been interesting to probably do more physics because I know like I saw other things online where people did other things with bikes and they did all kinds of things with just like <coughs> velocity and how wind resistance could also affect it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> we have time for a question. Um, so I'm interested in, I know that when you break you pull the lever and the brakes just sort of do their thing um did you have to look at how hard the brakes were pressing against the wheel to use like the normal force with the coefficient and how did you do that i don't know if you well i didn't do that i just calculated all right for the force used i used the force applied to the brake which i just assumed was equal like how hard you squeeze it yeah okay i didn't know if that mechanism was dependent on how hard you squeeze. obviously like you can 
pull the lever all the way down to push the brakes in, but I didn't know if like the force which with, with which the brakes uh, hit the wheel was equal to how much you were squeezing that. I think it, or based on what I had, it, it seems like it, but I feel like there would be a point where like no matter how hard you squeezed it, I mean, it wouldn't okay. matter after a certain point. I'm actually going to jump in and say we haven't talked about a concept called mechanical advantage much, but it's related to the ability to pull something. And uh, you seem to have some biking experience. If you squeeze the brake, do you think those calipers around the, um, the rim squeeze as much distance as you've moved the brake handle? Or have they moved less or more? They've moved less, which is probably to your advantage then. Since they've moved less distance, they'd exert more force. So you probably have a greater normal force than you calculated because of that advantage of the mechanism. It's a complicated mechanism in that case because you've got a cable running to a different part on the bike entirely, um, but you could calculate based on the distance that if you pull the lever some distance and it moves half as much distance, then the force would be doubled to a, a simple approximation. Are there other questions? So I'm, I'm just curious um, how you did this. Were you riding the bike and you had like a force sensor on the thing? No, I had it stationary. Basically, like I pretty much just lifted the the bike frame up and then just spun the wheel and then let it spin for a while and then pulled on the brake. I mean, it be kind well. It'd be hard for me to like get a photo gate strapped to a bike connected to a laptop <laughs> while also trying to pull the force sensor. Yes. <laughs> So you had, you had like a photo gig with the little post notes and you would look at. So it like, so basically I just picked up the front end and this was sitting on the ground and I just spun it with my hand and then watched it spin for a little bit so I could calculate the velocity and the acceleration. I see. Cool. Thanks again.